In this video, we're going to discuss some of the common problems and pitfalls that you get with the 1.4 TFSIs and TSI engines. So the intention of this video is just to help you to spot these problems early on before they become big issues. Some of the problems are quite common and are regularly reported, and most of them are things that you can do something about if you're aware that there is a potential weak spot there and completely avoid the problem in the first place. So some people are reporting very slow warm-ups on the 1.4 TFSI engine. That's something that typically doesn't affect a good 1.4 TSI or TFSI engine. They're aluminium blocks, they're quite small, they're very, very efficiently designed and to meet emissions regulations, they are specifically designed to warm up quickly. So if your car is taking a long time to warm up, most of the problems are actually just with the thermostat and the way it reports the water temperature to you. So just replacing the thermostat is usually enough to fix the problem. And it's more of a reporting issue than an actual problem with the car warming up. I've seen guides that recommend leaving the engine running for 15 or 20 minutes, which is a really bad idea. You never want to leave an engine idling to warm it up. The best way to warm an engine up is to just jump in the car and drive it, but keeping your RPMs down to about 3,000 at the maximum during that warm-up period just to avoid causing any damage or problems within the engine. So we've got other videos coming up on the 1.4 TFSI and TSI. Um, don't worry too much about the TSI and TFSI. The T stands for turbo and the FS I and SI stand for fuel stratified injection or stratified injection and that just refers to the direct injection method and the labeling between the cars in the Volkswagen Audi group leaves a lot to be desired they seem to randomly use terms on their engines describing exactly the same engine coil packs on these are thankfully quite reliable there's been a lot of issues in the past with coil packs on the Volkswagen Audi group but I've not heard very much when it comes to problems with the coil packs you see certainly won't be increasing power by uprating the coil pack. A spark is a spark. The plugs are well designed and generally last for about 40,000 miles. So please boot that like button. It really helps us to get out there. We're a small channel. We appreciate all the help we get. Let us know in the comments what car you've got. We'll be doing specific videos for cars. And the more information I've got from you guys watching these videos, the more I can tailor this channel to suit you and address the cars that you actually want me to talk about. You've got to watch the carbon buildup because these were direct injection engines engines and just by their nature they're not squirting fuel onto the back of the valves so carbon is going to build up on those valves and after 50 to 70,000 miles that carbon will start to build up to the point it's affecting the performance of the car so if you notice flat spots and poor running it's probably down to carbon build up and the best way of dealing with it is to have a walnut clean done or have a garage professionally remove the intake and use solvents and chemicals to clean off the carbon on those valves and it will be as good as new so although it is a frustration every direct injection engine that doesn't employ some sort of port injection method will have a problem with carbon build up and I note that a lot of the newer Audi engines also use a little bit of port injection on the warm-up cycle, which really does eliminate any carbon build-up issue. So perhaps that's an option if you were an adventurous mechanic and you wanted to upgrade your car and avoid the carbon build-up issue, setting up some kind of port injection could certainly help to remove that risk entirely. Another little confusion I often get into discussions with with people on the 1.4 engines is whether they have a timing belt or a timing chain and again it seemed almost random what Volkswagen Audi Group did. I know that a lot of the cylinder on demand and newer models have gone back to using a timing belt and a lot of the older engines have a timing chain but there is no clear year from what I can make out as to where this was changed over. And if you've got a timing chain, it's metal, it's going to stretch over time. You need to get that changed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions or you'll get problems. And also with the belts, they don't last forever. They should be changed every five years. And I think the service interval is something between 70 and 90,000 miles, somewhere in there. So whichever comes up soonest, it certainly makes a lot of sense to get those belts and timing chains changed the last thing you want is them to snap and end up with pistons crashing into the valves causing all sorts of problems in the engine and that is a pretty expensive repair 
High oil consumption has also been noted on some 1.4 TFSI engines. It's often down to the rings and the cylinders. Some of the early ones had problems with piston rings and they would burn a lot of oil. A lot of oil would get by those piston rings. It was particularly an issue with the twin charge versions of the engine. But if you're experiencing high oil consumption, suspect that it may well be related to the piston rings, especially on those early engines that came out. On the newer engines and on those early engines that have had a factory recall and had various parts and components replaced, it shouldn't any longer be an issue. Keep an eye on the oil consumption. Mine hardly uses any oil. Between service intervals, I generally top it up with between half a litre and a litre. And that is literally about 9,000, 12,000 miles of driving. So it's not using any. And I'd come from a, a two litre TFSI many years ago, and that seemed to use a litre. So I'm quite grateful for the, the way these engines have been designed. But if it is using oil, there is a problem there that you do need to get addressed. The diverter valves on these engines can can be weak often when you take your car in for remap the problem is usually associated with some diverter valve issue usually the diaphragm starting to fail so if you are thinking of remapping as a precaution i would upgrade the diverter valve on the turbocharger and just make sure that it's going to be able to handle the demands that you're going to be placing upon it with your remap another thing to watch out for with these engines is the pcv valve on the crankcase if that fails, you're going to have all sorts of problems like rough running when it idles, jerky acceleration, particularly as you go on or off throttle and it upsets the, the fueling. It's a very easy part to change. It's generally just four screws. It's re relatively easy to access as well. So if you have a problem with your PCV valve, it certainly makes sense to just ditch the old one and get a new one and fit that yourself. Don't take it into a garage and ask them to do it. You don't want to pay labor fees on garages when it's a job that you can do yourself. And there's lots of guides online as to how to change the PCV. Keep an eye also on the cam follower. In higher RPM applications, if you drive the car particularly hard, you can get excessive cam follower wear and that can present as lots of different problems with the engine. It affects the idling, the rough running of the engine and directly impacts the efficiency of the high pressure fuel pump attached to it. So just keep a, an eye on that and check it every 10,000 miles or so. Just check it for wear. And if you're noticing wear, get it sorted. Don't live with it and wait for it to fail because the knock on effects that that's going to have could be detrimental to the entire engine in its long term. Turbochargers are generally quite reliable. If you start to get black smoke, blue smoke or white smoke, it could well be down to an issue or a fault with the turbo. You'll usually typically notice some kind of whining or siren noise coming from the turbo turbo before it fails. So if you notice any noises associated with the turbo that weren't there when you first got the car, get the turbo checked out because if that fails, it can have disastrous consequences on the engine and certainly affect your reliability, leaving you with a breakdown to deal with at some point. So please boot that like button. It really helps us to get out there. We're a small channel. We appreciate all the help we get. Let us know in the comments what car you've got. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.